We're live. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Sal and Roy, and uh, you keep we're thinking back. I'm going to say that, don't you? <laughs> I might. I was. I'm waiting. I know. I might. So be. we're back. We thought we'd show you guys some ornament stuff, just because I guess we're in the mood and uh, the Christmas spirit. And um, well, for us here at, at Delphi, we've been Val and I know have both been doing a few classes on on helping people make these kind of ornaments. So we thought we would just show you guys. Yeah, that process. we have a few different, a few different methods. Um, I do a couple of different ones in the torch, and um, then Roy will, will go to the furnace. So we kind of thought we'd just start with, this is um, called a hot head. This is a torch that, that I use often for my um, ornament class, which are gonna be these kind of, I, there's some confusion now that we're doing blown ornaments yeah. in the mm. furnace. I think we call these often Glass Colbin. Flatwell or blown globes, mm -hmm. I think. But there but I've seen it someplace so over the years it's been called, you know, blown glass ornaments. So it gets confused. Well, once we got right well there. exactly. And once we got the furnace, then that's where I mean before that there was no confusion, but now there is a little confusion. So <laughs> the difference is is that um, these are we do in the torch or this particular one we do in the torch. And then Royal show the version of the ones we do out in the, the big furnace when we're done. But we kind of staggered. Like this is like I think the most user friendly torch, um, the most inexpensive torch. And this is also what I use to teach um, beginning bead classes. And mainly because it is just such a great lower end price wise to, way to get started and and actually be able to do a lot and not have a big complicated setup as well so so when these um they're called glass colvins when these things came around um they're preformed tubes with a pipe we call on it and when these things came around it actually we we thought that maybe we would have to use a hotter torch and all but actually these are um coe 90 so that is kind of the cool thing about it, that I can do them with this kind of heat, because this is not the biggest, hottest thing on the market by any means. So, but it's plenty enough to melt these. And also this torch head has a bigger, wider flame, which actually works a lot better with the fact this is wide and I have to heat this whole thing. So, you know, some of my bigger, hotter torches, the, the flame is very thin and it would be a little more tricky to keep this hot. And anyway, you can see, you'll see. Especially for I, a beginner, right? Yeah, I mean, for beginners, exactly. So, so what's really cool about these is, you know, also, so for people who fuse, you know, if they don't all turn out perfectly, because when you buy them, you buy them in a box like this yeah, and you get, this, right? you get 12 of these, vials in the box and then you also get the caps you know so to make the ornaments and um so and here's some up here if you want and you see we've left some on the pipes and we've i know the other ones are kind of hidden um and that, and that might be warm so be careful with that i mean you know. <laughs> so uh, anyway so we thought we'd start with you know this torch because this is a version of things we sell and teach on and then this version, which I will later do, um, they're not, I'm not gonna do any little blown ornaments, however you could, with the borosilicate glass, we could seal an end of the tube and heat it in a very similar way and, and make ornaments. But I'm gonna show you some icicles. Oh, I was um, Yeah, they're over there. I wonder where they were in, I couldn't see them. Kate, like, pulled I them moved them. I know, and I said, oh my gosh, they're hot, but they, she said they weren't. No, they're not hot. Okay, yeah. 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 See, around here, a lot of us don't commit to anything until we sort of, <laughs> <laughs> not Kaylee, she's just grabbing them and putting them everywhere, so no. Okay. I moved the fiber papers to be clear. Oh, okay. I didn't actually okay. touch the icicle. Okay, good, because it made me a bit nervous when you were doing that. So. Okay, we're so safe, it's the fine. Re the, way we, well, the way we get the color in here, and like I said, this is a class I've taught, and I've taught it for years, and um, it seems to be pretty popular, and people seem to really enjoy it, so sort of what I do is kind of based on the fact that people that are doing it are are new at it, but I find that it works really well. So we use um, the 90 frit. So just bullseye frit that like we use in all our fusing and, and compatible with our other 90 glass. So we use our bullseye frit in here and I'll, I'm just gonna show you that, I mean, I just do it this way. I just kinda stick the end of the pipe in there, get a little color in the bottom. I was gonna make a, 
a red, white, and blue one. No, I wasn't. I was no. going to make a red and it's green. A patriotic one. <laughs> no, it's got For Veterans Day. I'm confused. I'm confused as to what time of year it is. So how do you know how much color to put in? Well, it, you know, like I said, because it's, it's kind of designed for, this is a little more than I actually have students do, mm. because, you know, you can put as much as you want in there, but then you're going to have a, then you're going to have a holding pattern while oh, it attaches. Wow, to... So the amount I usually ask them to do is a little less than this, and I found that it seems to be the perfect amount that by the time they're turning in the flame and it starts adhering to the inside about the time the vessel's ready to blow the frizz can is already you know oh, right. melted yeah. or at least tacked on so that's what, but you can obviously too the more frit i would put in here the more mass i would add which would equate into more wall thickness which would mean i could blow them bigger oh. so this size out here is really kind of the standard size so when you push that out so kaylee can can you do can you do something? I can do something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding this chair down. Yeah, I found this one. I found this one in the <laughs> He's tiny. in the in the vermiculite yeah. stuff and I don't even know whose it is. It's not mine, but but some of the cute some of the little ones are really cute too. So but because of the amount of frit I put in and the pre existing wall thickness, I mean that's about as big as you should go and still be fairly stable. Yeah, otherwise they get pretty thin. Right, exactly. Stuff. We could go much bigger, blow them much bigger, but they would just be like like cellophane almost. You know, they get really, really thin. So I just put that much in and um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. This torch is fairly loud, so I'll just sort of talk my way through it, yeah, but if you can, hopefully you can hear me, and um, if not, it yeah. only, it'll only take a 30 seconds or so, so it won't be that painful, I hope. So, okay, so here's, I'm gonna light this. Most of the time I use matches. I also think that's a little safer way to, less frustrating way to light when you're not, um, when you're new at this. So, I'm gonna turn it down. I really see the glass absorb the heat. And so I know you see that orange ball of light around it. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking past that to try to see the glow in the glass. So once I see that in the front part, then I'm gonna go to the middle for a few turns. Now my tip is out, so I back to the tip. You can't, I don't wanna lose all that heat that I put in there. put it immediately into fiber blanket or these are the are annealing bubbles. I sometimes call them beads. This is actually the color combo I just did. So I'm going to put on the white. Does it show better? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I think that's kind of pretty. I think I put a little more white in this next one because when I looked at this I thought maybe more white would be. But yeah. it's okay, right? No, no, it's nice. Very Christmassy. Yeah. So, so the end of the tube is like, uh, you know, it's designed so you can blow it, right? So it's just smooth, there's no... Yeah, it's rounded, you know. it's rounded for your mouth. Yeah, it's very it's very comfortable, actually. Yeah, it's good, it's good. And then we have a, a scribe or a little 
tool that we use to, to score around it, knock that pipe off. And then if you're gonna wanna use them as ornaments, that one I just did the other day, so I haven't put a cap in it. You know, these little caps come with it. And you're gonna see, Roy's gonna blow one in the furnace. And, and this is, they're, I mean, they're beautiful, but they're gonna be a little heavier yeah, they're definitely than these. And, and so that is one of, I think, the pluses of these. They're so lightweight that they can just sort of you can put them in your tree wherever, you know, you don't, nothing else is yeah. will fit because it's too heavy or something like that, so you can fill in spots. Anyway, so that's the one, <laughs> one of the ways we do that here. So I think I'll just go to the um, icing. Questions. That's okay. Yeah, unless you have questions, so again, if you yeah. have any questions, you know, or just, you know um, make a comment in the section below, um, you can message us on Instagram. Oh, we don't have our The cheese she's <laughs> done in here, I was gonna see how long it took. <laughs> Uh, message, email. yeah, or message us on Facebook too, right? And then um, you can always know, send us a message, email us, Facebook at DelphiGlass.com. You don't need yeah, the cheat sheet. Like wow. I don't know. I don't know. If I didn't, hopefully you know how to get hold of us. You can always call us too, right? No, I just, you use that telephone. Yeah, ask for Val. And, <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, I'm just gonna put this over to the side here because I think we're gonna. Call so yeah. this other torch then is like so so sometimes people refer to that first one as like a single fuel fuel right mm -hmm. um, I was gonna say tank but, yeah. oh, it's, 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 it's the same concept right yeah so but this one is this one is a um, oxygen propane yeah oxygen it, it's a gas and an oxygen feed so um, in our situation we always use propane so sometimes people use natural gas but yeah, yeah we do but it's a little more complicated there's a little bit of a Pressure issue you have. That's to, my problem. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. So you're just using, like, you guys can't see the setup, but so she just has like the gas tank you would have for a grill, right? Like a propane yes, gas okay. tank. So nothing <laughs> nothing too outlandish, no, right? And I mean, then just oxygen. Of course, we have big tanks for oxygen because we, because you go through more oxygen and do propane. Nice. Yes, you do. You're right. See, I remember some stuff. So. Right, right. Okay, so this one um, is once again, you know, it's, and I, I, I do this because I always think in class it's kind of fun for people. You know, when you take a class and you're just learning something, sometimes you're not you're not producing, you know, your gallery work right off the bat, right? So, um, so it's we always try to search for things we can teach that will also give you something to show for your time. So this um, icicle seems to be something that people, you know, in my intro to Boro class we throw that in sometimes at the end, and it seems to be something people enjoy. So. You know, like I said, we've got a couple of blown ornament situations, so I thought we'd do something um, just a little solid and, and show you this torch. This is a hotter thing, and this is a different glass. This is um, for silicate glass. So um, we talked about the glass Colvin having the 90 expansion rate. Well, these are um, 33. So these are much lower on that number scale, which also means they're much harder. They're a much harder glass which means it takes more heat, more, heat yeah. more firepower to melt. So that's why the hothead or the torch I just used really wouldn't, wouldn't work for this. So you would want to do something a little more, um, you have to have almost, you have to have an oxygen feed. The oxygen is the accelerator, which actually gives you more heat. So um, you need some sort of gas oxygen mixed torch to do this. You don't need one this big, I mean, you know, we used to sell with that minor bench burner. It seems you know, to be one that a lot of people are familiar with. And, and this, this particular torch has two separate um, flames, or you blend them together. So it has one center fire that actually is very similar to a minor bench burner. Um, for whatever you're working on, if that seems to be adequate enough, then you don't need to turn the outer rings on and because you're just gonna be using more product, you'll just be using more gas and more oxygen more so so you know if you can use a smaller flame and it works great then you don't use the outer ones but it does have the option now I'll, I'll turn it on and show you um, one of the other really beautiful things about this torch is how quiet it is I mean the other one is is like I said a great way to get going but it is uh, it is loud so you turn on gas first when it's on this yeah actually, I actually so. light my match first so I don't want to be bleeding gas into oh, the wood, sure. right? Yep. So I always light my match first, or if you have a striker, you're gonna hold it there and start striking it when you turn your gas on. 
And um, so that just makes it light immediately so you don't have that smell, you know, wondering if you have a leak or something. So yep, that's what I did. So I so like that's that. just gas right here. Yeah, this is the propane. Yeah. So the way it goes, somebody wrote, took it off my board, oh. um, but usually I have up there P-O-O-P, poop. poop. And um, really that's just a reminder for people that are new, the sequence in how they turn the torch on and then how they turn it off. So you turn it on by lighting the propane first, then you add in the oxygen, which would be adding in the oxygen would be looking like this. And then when you turn it off, you do just the opposite. You take out the oxygen, so there's your O, P-O-O, -O, and then turn off your propane. Poop. Helps some people remember, you know, when you're not um, not real experienced or haven't done it very many times. So. Yeah. Okay, so this is just gonna be, I, I think, I was thinking maybe I should, should I do blue, or should I do one side blue, one side clear? Yeah, that's what Blue and want. clear. Is that what you want? Okay. Yeah. Um, I did one, Kaylee can show you, I did one that is um, ruby. It's just a, a clear with ruby stripes on it. And it's really, that looks pretty lackluster, but that's a ruby that sort of goes clear at a certain temperature. So when I anneal that and strike it, that's going to turn this really, really jewel tone red transparent color that's really pretty. But it didn't. I mean, sometimes it'll stay that way when you're using it, but it didn't, so I think that's not as exciting as... We'll do the blue. We'll do it. Okay, so I need different glasses for this. Um, so I do need a, um, a didymium shade, because now this flame is hot enough that um, it makes that orange ball of light, that soda flare, it makes it very, very bright, and it'll make it very hard to see. And so sometimes the different colors that you use in the in the borosilicate too will um, will cause that to really glare. So you really need um, once again, first and foremost, you need something to protect your eyes. And um, after that, with this kind of a torch, you need at least at least didymiums. And then sometimes you might need to even go if you're going to do a lot of color and really work some hot and extended periods of time, you might even need to go to a welder shield on top of your didymium. So like a three or something, depending on, you know, people who do a lot of this work and use a lot of heavy metal colors probably are wearing a five of welder shade. So, so anyway, I got to heat. I'm going to heat my clear a little bit here just so they have to, it has to stick. I mean, if they're not warm, it will not stick so I'm just giving a little heat letting my blue sort of start to get a little soft and then I'm going to come in at the top and I'm just going to kind of start I just want to stripe it down so I'm holding the blue I'm just kind of holding it with a little pressure on it so it's pretty stiff so as it's melting I'm I'm inch you know I'm just sort of letting it inch down a little bit I don't know if you can tell but so it's going down in a straight line yep yeah. Okay. Or somewhat. Mm -hmm. oh, there we go. I was trying to aim it so you could see, and I got a little wavy there, but it's it'll be fine. It'll work out. So there's a stripe down one side, right? Then I'm going to come back over and do the same thing opposite it. Get my little blue started before I tack it on there. And then as soon as I tack it on there, I've moved my clear rod out of the fire so I can keep the blue. Because if I don't have this blue right in that hot part of the flame, it'll just it'll just get stiff on me. So see, I, even though I'm kind of keeping it right in the flame, I got a little pressure going down, but it's still, you know, I can still feel it's a little stiff, which is fine. And then we're going to take that out. So do you notice that some colors are stiffer than other Usually colors? Usually the cobalt for sure is really stiff. Yeah, there's a lot of differences in, in you know, clear is probably the softest and just flows much nicer, but... So you can do whatever. Sometimes I put a clear loop at the top. Um, I'll go ahead and just stick this one up here, the blue, and so we'll have a blue top to it. So I attach that in a nice permanent seal. This is a little different too in terms of soft glass because every time I connect something, I have to flow it together. I can't just stick it on, mm -hmm. you know, I can't just 
dab it on and, or tack it on, it, it, this glass doesn't like that and it'll start to crack around that. And so, I don't know if you can tell, Kaylee, but mm -hmm. where that blue, is it the clear at the top? See how smooth it is? Mm -hmm. it's just, so Trying to get it to focus, there yep. it goes. Okay, so that's what, what I'm talking about, meaning it has to really just almost look uninterrupted where they meet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so then what I do is I let a little heat come out of that connection so that I can go right here at the top and just start to heat. And I'm really just kind of heating the width of the flame. I, I once again, sort of a lot of this is based on teaching. And so I found this is the way um, people can do, start doing this the best. I just heat it a little bit, then I just add a little twist. It sort of pushed back on me, meaning it wasn't quite soft enough. So I went back in. Am my arm in there? Oh, you're good. Okay. And then, kind of let a little heat come out of that part, go to the next. So I'm sort of just kind of working my way down. And like I said, the, the red, when I did it with the ruby, it, you know, it went so much faster. This one is quite a bit stiffer because of that blue. So I twist a little bit, and then when I get about there, I'll pull just a hair and just kind of start to stretch it a little bit. Move down. See, I just roll it in the same place just to put enough heat in that area that when I pull, stretch it. Mm -hmm. okay. So we don't have that dichromium lens in this room. We do, but so what last time I don't know. Oh, it wouldn't focus. So. It had a hard time focusing. I was just say we yeah. tried it the last time, and we didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kayla ended up not using it because it wasn't. Yeah, I know the glasses that I have on, the, you know, I'm not seeing that orange glow at all, so it's really kind of yeah. nice. Yeah, and I don't either, but yeah. I'm sure it's I'm sure, bright. yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's what the didymiums do, is just filter that out so that you actually can see through that. Through the ball. And then, yeah, so you can see what the heck's happening underneath there. So then you can just kind of go to the end, or, you know, like sometimes I'll just go... And the nice thing is, too, you know, you can make them as long or as short as you want. So, you know, I'll probably... So you're pulling that a little bit. Yeah, I'm then... just kind of trying to taper it a little yeah. bit as I go. So that's a blue-green. This one is a... Um, it's an iridescent boro color. So it's really kind of pretty. I don't know if you can see that it's just kind of a blue-green. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, what I will do is end it down here, obviously, and take it off. But I'm not going to take it off quite yet because now I have to make my loop. So now I'm gonna go back up to my top, and now I've gotta heat that section of blue up there so that I can stretch it and loop it around and actually make the, um, the top loop. So if this was soft glass, would you be able to you could. keep it out of the fire as long as you've been keeping no, it out? No, 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 you wouldn't, you wouldn't. You have, like, you know, you have a, lot of, a lot of flexibility with this in terms of shocking it or anything. It, it doesn't really mind. So know. this seems so much more forgiving for a beginner, honestly, at least from. I think you're right. I think it, I, what I think is, I think it depends on what your, your experience has been. Because I went from soft glass to this and I struggled because it's so different. Mm -hmm. But I think if this is the way you started, I think, you know, and you know, Kayla, we yeah, have people here that you know, have taken our classes over the years. Mm -hmm. Some of you just love this boro, and some of you just love the soft glass. And but I do think people who, uh, to me, this is this could be a little more zen because mm -hmm. nothing's just becoming you know, molten, molten and drippy, and you know, you're not looking at. There's it. less pressure, I feel yeah. like, to like rush through it. You have a little bit more time to think and really yeah. kind of act. I think So now that I've, I've you know, I've brought that around to make this loop, but basically I am still just sitting on there. I'm not, that's not flowed yet. That's just kind mm -hmm. of pushing on. So I've got to uh, get in there and get those two to actually really flow together before I can be sure that won't be a real fragile part. So I have a pick here. Sometimes when you're doing it, um, your, your loop will start to close up. However, my loop is pretty big, so I'm not really concerned about it. But 
I don't know if you can, but see how it's glowing. So now mm -hmm. I'm looking at that connection. They do look like they're pretty much melted together. There's no real blurb where it's just sitting on top. Oops. So then after I've done that, I go back in and kind of heat the top, and then I may go and try to, you know, rework my loop a bit or my shape up there. And um, But then basically, that's it. It's kind of hard to see. I usually have a light. Yeah, it's okay. So once Yes, Eric, this is Boro that I was working with. So now, once we've done that, then I'm going to go down here, and I am going to melt um, this top down here, and then I'll try to kind of heal it a little bit. But um, if you can see, I'm using my um, my marble tweezers or the mm -hmm. ring ones, and um, you know that is something you're going to want to um, think about if you're doing anything in this particular glass that's not round because flat tweezers are not going to be safe holding something round. It'll do what this is kind of trying to do. So, so that's all I did was just kind of, and like I said, I made a, I made another blue one earlier just so you could see because, oh, okay. Okay. So basically this has got to go in the annealing, in mm -hmm. the annealer. So I'm going to just, it's hot. So be careful. Mm -hmm. well, that was interesting. Okay. Sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, so, so I'm just going to put this in and kneel that for a little while, and then we're good. Okay, so we're going to get the questions, I'm sure, about annealing temperature and how long. So let's real quick touch on that. Um, Boro anneals at around 1050 Fahrenheit. So once again, just like a lot of our glass stuff, it sort of depends on size and mass. So I say that icicle, I think, would be good in there for probably a half hour is probably plenty. And then just take it off and... Just let it cool down. Mm -hmm. Same thing as okay. soft you still have to just... Let, let it, it calm down. down. Yeah, let it come to close to room temperature. So, yeah. So it, that's kind of... Those are little fun things that we do here. So... Yeah, you ready, Roy? You made it look easy. Uh -huh. Well, I've done it a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now... We're going to travel and we're going to go through these double doors to the furnace. And then, Roy, you're up. I'm up. Right, great. Right. So, we're going to come on to the furnace. This is a little hotter than what Val was doing. <laughs> so, um, Everything hotter, heavier, you know, geez. So, here's the furnace. And uh, so, the What's going on with this is the lower half is where the molten glass is at, and we just have clear glass in there. So there's a crucible or a pot that's holding glass in there. I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, nope, it just looks like an yeah, orange, just one big orange, orange circle. circle. Yep. So, uh, and then the top half is where the flame is at, and this is where we're going to use it like a reheating chamber. So there'll be times I'll have to go back and reheat the piece I'm working on, and I'll just use the top half for the furnace for that. So I'm gonna grab a blow pipe real quick here. And we do offer classes in all of these. So you can visit delphiglass.com backslash classes to see what we've got going on here. <laughs> so we have to, the, the pipes are made of stainless steel. And if I just go in there and try to grab some glass, the glass is about 2,000 degrees, maybe a little over that. It won't grab onto the pipe. So I have to preheat the pipe, that's what I'm doing here. So I have this little opening inside, and then once it starts warming up, I can go a little bit further. I just need to get the end of it. So the advantage to working with stainless steel is it's not a great conductor of heat. So the, the heat's not really going to travel up the pipe so much, but you'll see I'm just going to be working, you know, barehanded on this. Over here, since there's only clear in the um, furnace, we pick up all of our color using print. And um, so I'm just going to lay a little bit out here. And like Val, I'm going to do something that's kind of Christmassy, so green and red, I think. I'm going to try to do. And uh, so the, I'm sure someone's going to ask the glass that we're using. So this glass here, the frit is actually from a German company called Reichenbach. Um, the clear that we're using in there, though, is from Oceanside, so it's a 96 COE glass, and then the, this is close enough to 96 that it works. So, 
think it's really like a 94 and a half or something crazy. But well, that's true, but you know, that's that's the case with that is, is that, um, and I, I always say this in class, and I don't really know who they are, but they say that within two digits, you know, like 90 and 88 or everything, I mean, that, that's what we've done. So usually, so if we're not just saying you can just do that, we're saying within that two digit, um, area, you can probably find, but I wouldn't go much further, I wouldn't go any further than that. I mean, we're not saying you can just Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I'm not suggesting by any means. No. I mean, these are made to to work together, right? I mean, right. the grid is with the, with the clear uh, glass base for these so. Let me uh, push that in a little bit further. I do have to grab some um, glasses, as Val was talking about earlier, right? So we're doing a few things with the glasses. Uh, one is just to pr provide some protection in case something, you know, comes flying at you, which could happen. Uh, but the other thing is, again, you saw that nice orange glow that's going on inside the um, furnace, and so it's producing ultraviolet and infrared light. And so, again, a couple things aren't so great for your eyes. So you'll notice that my glasses are slightly tinted, uh, so they do have a, a coating that's blocking the infrared and ultraviolet. So. And they're attractive. <laughs> they are. So I know they're <laughs> I forget sometimes I have a mind and I'm walking around the building and I'm like, all oh, the color is so weird. So all we need is just to get a little bit of the end glowing so you can see that nice glowing color to the pipe. And I can hold the pipe here. It's actually not even hot down here. So if you see the discoloration here, that's where the heat is really going to kind of concentrate at. So, you know, as I'm handling it, I'll just try to stay, you know, at least to the middle or further on up the pipe. I'm going to go get what's called a gather, and here I'm going to grab some glass and uh, get it on the end of the pipe. I know the furnace makes a little bit of a noise, so if you have our time hearing me, let us know. I can, I can always shut my mic off if it's really annoying. But... Hold on. Oh, there we go. So I grabbed a little bit of glass here on the end, and the next thing I'm going to do with it, it's called marbling. And marbling does a couple of things. One is, it um, shapes the glass a little bit, but it also cools it down, so uh, there's a little resistance when I go to blow it. So I can't actually see it. What I'm looking for is to, to kind of expand out a bit. Yeah, so nice, you can see I got a nice, nice little bubble, bubble on there. Now this isn't really enough glass to do to do an ornament, so I'd have to get a second gather, and I'm just gonna give it a minute or two to cool down. So a lot of times I might try to shave that a little bit more. Um, I also use the marker to kind of draw some of the heat out of the glass just so it cools off a little faster. Uh, sometimes uh, people I have a fan over here. Sometimes we'll have a fan running and just kind of set it in front of the fan just to cool it down. Uh, again, as you guys know, the risk always is if it cools off too much, then, you know, it could crack and fall off, but if you hear the noise that it makes, I mean, you see the orange glow, so the glass is probably at least a thousand, it's got to be somewhere around there, 900, 1000 degrees, but I need it to be stiff enough so that I can grab some more, uh, another gather. I'm going to grab a, get a second gather and then I'm going to go grab the color. So you should talk about why you, you always the bubble out with that first layer because once he gathers enough to actually make the size of the ornament, it would be almost yep. it would be very difficult to try to pump that amount of glass. Right? Yep, I mean, I, that first bubble, as Val was pointing out to, is like a um, we, we refer to it as like a starter bubble because, uh, as Val was mentioning, the more glass you get on the end of the pipe, the harder it is to blow it. So, so I just picked up some color, I need to melt this in. Uh, I'm going to see my polo twist in it. You did? I see it. It does, yeah. Okay. So the, the risk, the risk of picking up color and also putting a twist in it is that you collapse your bubble. So I was just trying to keep an eye on it. It looks like I still have a bubble inside there, which is good. Uh, so I need to melt the frit back in. And then I will, um, I'm going to go to the bench, which is kind of behind me here, and use what's called a block, which is a piece of wood 
uh, to shape the ornament a little bit better, and then I'll blow in it again. So it's going to be a series of kind of coming back and heating it up, blowing it. So the, the tricky part about this is we always have to keep spinning it, right? Because we're dealing with gravity and glass is molten enough. And so this is, um, I'm using water. Really what's, what's actually um, shaping this is a steam that's coming off. So I'm trying to get some of that. I didn't really get it hot enough to um, to get the ridges out that I put in. So I got to go repeat it. But let me, I'm going to just blow the bubble back up. hardly pinching at all. All I'm trying to do is establish an indentation that, that we call a jack line. Uh, so then it'll just make it easier, but you can already see again that the the, the, um, the fire was from the wax plate. But you can see the glass is already pretty stiff, right? So I gotta go back in and repeat it. So if you can look at the end of the blowpipe, you'll see where the blowpipe's still glowing orange. As long as I can see that, then I'm, I'm doing all right, right? If that starts to get too cool, then we run the risk again of the glass cracking and falling off. So what are you using that one for? Pretty nice. So I can just come here. 
I really barely have to do anything with the jacks. It's just really pretty much doing that on its own. But you'll see as I spin it, it also has a, a nice habit of um, kind of flattening the, the ball out. So Mary says it's really hard to hear you. So next time, let's we'll try to speak up a bit. Thank you, Mary, for letting us know. So I'm trying to get this jack line to be about the width of my thumb or something, right? So you can see how wide it is. It's still a little too wide. So um, again, I gotta go back, heat it up. I'm close. Maybe it up one more time. We really do appreciate all your feedback here on these videos, you guys. We, uh, we've been doing this for a few years, but we always want to know what you guys have to say. And especially doing some of these demos out here is a little harder. We are in our glass showroom. So, you know, we've got our store staff and our warehouse staff out here. Yep. So thank you for the feedback. One reason why we started a little late today, I was running to grab the microphones and uh, I had to talk to a couple of customers about kilns, kilns right? I'm trying to talk to anybody about anything else. Jacks a little bit, yeah, just stretch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. 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 So these are called diamond shears and they're just steel, right? So I'm going to come around and what this does is the metal chills the glass and draws some of the heat out. So I'm kind of pinching, pinching. I'm not really shape moving the glass because the glass is too stiff to really do anything with it, but hopefully this is going to cool it. Hopefully. gets his gather so that we don't let the uh, temperature drop too low and then have some sort of thermo shock issue. So that's all we're doing here. We'll take you back over to Roy. Yeah. So I just use a tweezer to bend that around, right? So, mm -hmm. so like uh, valves pieces, this has to go into a kiln to anneal it. We'll slide that in there. Nice. That wasn't too bad. I liked it. It was a good, it was a cute little one. And I'm gonna start. Um, and as you saw, the color was not. Look like what you did. Mm -mm. It looked like purple. Yeah, yeah it's gonna go. So, Kayla, you can maybe. Once it gets cool, you can show them. Yes. It's, it's going to be really pretty. It's going to be the green and red. We'll gather all your ornaments from today, and we'll do. We'll share a photo of them tomorrow. Okay. Cool. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's got to stay in there in case you're wondering when we talk about annealing a little bit. We we usually run the kiln for hours because we're often making several pieces and we're putting them in there, and that way even the last piece will be in there for a couple hours. So um, how much time it really needs? That's probably an hour, I would think. I know. Is it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, it wouldn't be much more than that. But our, our kiln is set to run for about 10 hours, so we won't be able to see it to all tomorrow at this point. But then, as you mentioned, the color will come back. And so, uh, I mean, if you guys got questions, again, feel free to reach out to us. Or suggestions. Yeah, or suggestions. Yeah, we're always looking for we ideas. Up, we came up with this one on our own, but I'm not sure. We might not. I don't get 
Yeah. Yeah. Helena says, so cool. So we're glad you guys like these. Yeah, thanks for sharing your time.